You're wanting to buy a Brute Force 750 because your cousin's friend knows a guy who swamped one one time, says it runs a little bit better with some sludge in the engine. Saw an Outlander on the trail the other day with a flat tire. Can't afford XTP. Can Am's overpriced crap. Insist the manufacturers to make a 120 horsepower turbo four wheeler, but you got slick factory rubbers on your 300EX. Your stepsister wants a ride on your four wheeler, but your parents got together when you was teenagers. We've all seen how this story ends. Oh my God, stop bro, I'm stuck. Howdy partners, welcome back to Dirt Obsession. Buckle them riding boots and mount that new GoPro, because today we're talking about how to choose the best ATV for you. If you're new to the channel, you may not already know that Dirt Obsession is a small collection of oversized Kentucky rednecks that burn through ATVs faster than your grandmother faints at a Neil Diamond concert. <laughs> We've been lucky to own or test a lot of machines over the last few years, and at least one of us has owned more than a busload of bodacious banshees bombastically blasting through bourbon country, bouncing boulders and bumping the bowels till the two-stroke hits the brown note. <laughs> So today we're going to help you through the decision making process, not by comparing specific machines, but identifying the most important points you should consider when choosing the best ATV for you. After all, we want you to have the most fun possible while blasting through the trails, pitching tents, and posting photos of your new love. We've alluded to this before in some of our previous videos, but knowing yourself and what gets you the most out of an ATV is the first step in the buying process. Many a man blows unneeded money on the most premium machine possible when his needs may have been better met by a more practical option. So here's step one. Understand what you want from the ATV. Do you need more sport or more utility? More power or practicality? More comfort or more performance? The decision, unfortunately, isn't always left solely up to you. You have to consider who you're going to be riding with. I'm on food stamps, but I still want a wheeler. I'm jealous. If anyone. And if you're a solo artist, which machine is least likely to leave you stranded? If your primary riding crew likes tearing it up on solid axle sport machines, a super heavy ultra bore 4x4 may not be the best choice. Likewise, if your crew switched to steering wheels, Ew. you're going to want something that can handle chewed up terrain. And if your only intended use is to get casually from point A to point B with no intention of breaking traction or sound barriers, go around, go around, then value is probably your biggest draw. Like all things, the right machine is about balance and compromise, and most importantly understanding what type of terrain is going to be available for you to ride on. Once you decided the primary intended use, you're ready for step two. Step two is to choose the right category of ATV, and very simply ATVs break down into three categories, sport, utility, and sport utility. In the sport category, obviously you have the traditional solid axle machines from Yamaha, including the Raptor or the YFZ, as well as a Sport 4x4 from Can-Am in the Renegade 570, 850, and 1000, and Polaris with the standard width and 55-inch wide scramblers. My only thing is if your buddies have side-by-sides but you want a wheeler, then it. Buyers in this class generally know who they are, especially the solid axle quad riders, but the Sport 4x4s are a little trickier. They have some advantages, like being lighter and looking cool, but for many enthusiasts, the small sacrifice in weight is worth it to go with a little more utility. After all, are you really losing that much performance when you go from a Renegade to an Outlander? I have some inside information that ATV On Demand intends to find the answer to that question, so don't miss that shootout on their channel. The utility category is less for the enthusiast and more for the farmer job site. There are some specialty machines out there like six-wheeled ATVs with a bed for increased payload, and you could lump some of Honda's offerings into the utility class merely because of the simplicity of their design, although you'll definitely see guys out there having fun on a rancher. The vast majority of riders are going to fit snugly into the sport utility category, and that fact isn't lost on anyone because the vast majority of machines on the market would fall under the sport utility umbrella. Pretty much every manufacturer plays ball in this category, so there's a whole slew of options, and for most folks, it's the best compromise of work and play capability. Chances are you'll be looking somewhere in this category, and since it's the largest, we can break it down even further. While most offerings in the sport utility category are pretty straightforward, there are a couple of dark horses that we need to address, and that's the mud machines and the two-ups. These machines are basically modified sport utility ATVs, which is why we put them under the genus of sport utility, but they're certainly their own species, and worthy of being pointed out. Mud machines either speak to you or they don't. This type of niche riding requires modifications to the airflow system, bigger, heavier tires, and then clutching and suspension to compensate for those tires. 
Excellent choice for folks headed straight to the deep stuff, but not so good for trail shredders because of the lower gearing and restricted airflow. Bigger tires and less suspension travel also means less trail performance, so keep those things in mind if you're only looking to dabble in the mud. Two ups are equally niche, best suited for the easy trail adventurer looking to take along a spouse or child. The only time it's acceptable for men to ride stacked like this is in a fighter jet. Period. The extended chassis can offer certain advantages on straight slopes, but the advantage is lost on off-camber hills. If you need a two-up, you know it. But like the mud machines, you're sacrificing some trail performance. So now you've got a pretty good idea of what you want. You may be a sport dude, a utility guy, or a mud pup. In those cases, the limited market will help narrow down your choices. But if you're still with us, let's take it to step three, which is choosing the right size. There's a growing misconception among ATV enthusiasts that 1,000cc ATVs are necessary to have fun. And sure, we played the game in Dirt Obsession. We've all owned the biggest machines available. Dickus. Dickus. And there's undoubtedly some advantages to having a never-ending supply of power. But there's some downsides, too. First off, the price of the big boys is steep. For most of us, an ATV is a toy, with some, but not tons, of practical everyday use. You can buy two mid-sized displacement ATVs for the price of a premium big bore. Second is the weight. A heavier machine is harder to manage. You'll notice this in the machine's agility, but also if some accidental whoops-a-daisy has the rubber side up. I know it isn't American not to have the biggest and the baddest machine available, but look at an ATV like an off-road motorcycle. A middle-weighted machine of balance and compromise helps most riders get the most out of their ride. If we're being honest, and we usually are, the smallest displacement 4x4s just leave too much to be desired. That could be due to our collective circumferences, or our appetites, but the 450 class machines in general will top out around 40 miles an hour, and they take a while to get there. Now that's plenty fast for most folks, and a solid trail pace on any day, but that's also throttle pinned giving her the juice. So while the biggest of the big bores tend to leave too much in the reserves, the smallest displacements just leave too much to be desired. Value-oriented buyers can find great prices on solid performing 570 machines from Polaris and Can-Am. Performance and reliability coexist nicely with the big 700 plus singles from Yamaha and Suzuki. And for those who have their steak with a side of sausage like a couple of fellas I know, there's high performance without completely breaking the bank in the 850 class. So to sum it up, take a good hard look at how you'll use the machine most. The right machine may not be the first ATV that you're immediately drawn to, but if you get the right machine, you'll maximize your fun and minimize your buyer's remorse. Check out our last video for information on the top ATV manufacturers and the strengths and weaknesses of their lineup. And as always, thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.